Hello, and welcome back to episode eight of the Man v. Fat Wales podcast. Um, today I'm throwing over to a few of the guys from Man v. Fat Bristol. I've been over in Bristol for two weeks now. Um, and a lot of the questions they're asking are the same as uh, my guys in Newport, and I know the guys in Swansea and Cardiff and, and all the other leagues around the, the country are asking. Um so this is part two of our Q&A. So the first uh, Q&A session um, we did, and it was a load of uh, Newport guys asking some questions. Um, I, I forget the names now. I think Lloyd asked one, uh, Jay asked one. Um, and today I'm just going to go through five questions very quickly. Hopefully going to put a few um, images up as well to support uh, what I'm saying and kind of give a bit more understanding. Um but obviously, if you listen to this on the podcast as well, I'll explain them all as well. So let's go. So uh, like I said, throwing over to Bristol, a few of the Bristol guys. So first one, Luke W. Luke W asks, what is the best way to recover after exercise? So first things first, um, in terms of what I do for Man v Fat, my focus on, on weight loss. So anything I say now based on um, exercise, recovery, things like that, um, won't be the very best answer you can possibly get. But what it will be is it'll be based on my experience as a Mammy Fat player. I've been playing a Mammy Fat since 2018 um, and being a bigger guy exercising. So I do know what it's like. Um, so he's talking about aches and pains. He does stretch before, which is fantastic, um, but he still gets joint and muscle pain. So first things first, uh, the best way to recover after exercise is not to overexercise. So man v fat games are typically, um, well, they are 28 minutes in, in length. Um, and during those 28 minutes, uh, there should be enough subs you can rotate people as well because i can remember my fir very first session uh my very first 28 minutes and going off after five and thinking i'm never going to be able to do this um so the first thing is don't over exercise um if you have exercised the day before and you're just back to it you know it's probably not the best thing to start man with fat and join a gym and um, play badminton with your friends etc 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 four times a week um give yourself your body give it recovery time okay normal aches and pains after vigorous exercise they're normal um but what you shouldn't do is you shouldn't not listen to your body uh sorry what you should do is listen to your body so listen to your body and say listen my body is aching so i'm not going to exercise today i'm going to rest um and obviously there's that doesn't mean just sitting on the couch. Uh, you can do lots of different things. You can do stretches in the house. Um, I'll put up a link after this to the, what's it called? The other room, the virtual gym that Man v Fat included the subscription. And in there, there's lots of low intensity, low impact, maybe stretching based activities. They'd be really useful. They're all over YouTube as well. Um, the other thing you can do in terms of the nutrition side of it is make sure you get adequate protein afterwards. Um, so adequate protein could be a protein shake. It could be um, just having a protein rich meal, steak, steak and eggs, um, chicken and broccoli. Uh, peas are good for protein. Um, uh, Mavi Fat actually put out protein rich foods. So I'll put that um, in the, in fact, what I'll do is I'll put that in, in all of our leagues uh, content for the week um so protein rich things so you can you can eat to um to aid muscle recovery as well but the main thing is rest and not overdoing it in the first place so it's a really good question luke thanks ever so much i've got two questions now someone's been a bit greedy from richard richard h um also from the bristol league so when calorie tracking which is worse carbs fat or protein. Now, this is a loaded question because everyone expects me to say, "Our oh, carbs are the worst. Uh, low carb is the way to go, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. And when I started Man v Fat, I was on a fully low carb diet, and my coach uh, didn't take me off it because he didn't tell me what to. He didn't tell me what to eat. Man v Fat as a as an organization don't tell you what to eat. Um, but he he kind of explained to me that carbs aren't the devil. Um, so I'm going to talk about carbs, fat, and protein, and the kicker. There's one other um, that you really need to think about if you want to lose weight. So carbs. Carbs, um, for every gram of carbs you consume, so that's um, 
any carbs. Uh, it's about four calories per gram. Um, you should aim for about 45 to 65% of your diet to be carbs. So I generally say about a, a, a half of your diet. It is filling um, because it bulks, it bulks you out in terms of, you know, it fills your stomach. Um, you can have complex carbs and simple carbs. Obviously, if your 50% of carbs has been consumed as sugar, which is very uh, quickly digested, quickly, oh gosh, I'm disappearing, and quickly digested and quickly um, used by the body, that's not going to be ideal. Uh, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't have any sugar at all. You shouldn't, uh, I, I see people saying, I'm not eating any sugar to lose weight. Sugar is essential. Sugar is essential for your instant energy, but also there's complex carbs, your um, your carbs that last a bit longer in your body. And I'm going to go into that in a second uh, question from Richard as well. Um, the other reason why we should eat carbs is they're tasty. Let's be honest. They are tasty. Mashed potato, tasty. Uh, obviously, there's ways of making mashed potato less, um, less calorific. But actually, if you think about the ways to make... Um, mashed potato less calorific it's nothing to do with the carbs in the potato it's to do with taking out the butter it's to do with taking out the cream is you know that I'm, I'm giving all my secrets away here um and it's essential carbs are essential we wouldn't function in our best possible way mentally and physically if we didn't have carbs carbs are really good and and the best source of energy for our body to keep us going. So they are essential. So don't just cut out all carbs and think they're bad. I will say this though, they are cheap. Okay. Cheap isn't always good with food. So because they're cheap, we can put a lot on our plate and not feel like we're wasting money. Uh, you're not going to put, you know, you can ladle and ladle and ladle mashed potato or pasta or rice on your plate, but you're not going to put 12 steaks on your plate because they're expensive to buy um so they're easy to overeat because they're cheap and they're easy to overeat because they're tasty uh, i started with that they're very tasty um so just be mindful of them don't be scared of them but be mindful of them because it's not that they're inherently bad four calories per gram um but actually they're easy to overeat they're easy to eat more grams of them so it's not the calories in the grams it's the amount of grams you eat um uh let's go to protein now so protein is brilliant protein is superb no one really has anything bad to say about protein uh, because because of the cost issue it, it kind of negates it you don't tend to overeat protein um and uh, unless the only time you overeat protein is generally on a big fry up when they put loads of protein on but actually when you break it down lots of the stuff that's on that is laden with fat as well so sausages typically aren't very lean Bacon, you know, the best bit is the crispy fat. Black pudding is full of fat, but it's also got, uh, you know, starchy carbs in there as well. Um, so when you break it down, even that isn't protein rich. Um, so four calories per gram, exactly the same as carbs. So people say, oh, carbs are bad, protein's good. No, they're exactly the same calories. It's just it's easier to overeat carbs than it is protein. Um, they are filling, but they're filling in the way that the they give your body cues. They're satiating. Um, they they fill you up um, in terms of the the mental side of it. So you know, they make you feel fuller for longer. Um, they are essential. So exactly the same as the carbs. Carbs are essential for energy. Um, protein is essential for keeping your body really healthy, keeping it um, strong and replenishing your muscles. I just talked in Luke's question about you know proteins essential after exercise. Um, and but they're harder to overeat just because they're expensive. Um, people don't tend to overeat carb uh, proteins, uh, and I've said they should be about ten to thirty-five percent of your diet being protein. And don't forget, like I just said, uh, you could say sausages are protein, but they're not. They've got you know rusk within them. They've got which is carbs. They've got fat within them for the flavour, which is fat, obviously. Um, so when we talk about protein, um, think about you know, lean protein, chicken breast, um, steak with most visible fat removed, um, lean mince. So like we're talking about 5% or less mince or 5% of less mince means it's 5% or less fat within the mince. Most of the rest of it is protein then. Um, 
So there's protein. Now I'm going to come on to fat. So fat is extremely flavorful. Um, it is high calorie, though, It's it, it, whereas the other two are four grams, uh, four calories per gram. That's nine calories per gram, so it's over double. Um, but it's also essential. Your body needs fat. So people who say, I'm not having any sugar, it's a bad idea. People who say, I'm not having any fat in my diet, it's not only a bad idea, it's very, it's nearly impossible to do, okay? So just be mindful of those absolutes. Uh, and fat, people recommend you should be about 20 to 35% of your diet um, because it is essential. It keeps your body going. Final one, Rich, um, alcohol. Alcohol actually is is of those three macros, carbs, fat, and protein, alcohol is another one that you should really think about including. Uh, alcohol is the kicker, okay? Alcohol is mostly empty calories. There are ways of doing low-calorie alcohol. Um, uh, the wonderful Emma from one of the Southwest uh, leagues, uh, she's put together a little uh, infographic on alcohol, um, and that's really good. I'm just going to put a note to make sure that's up now. Um, alcohol is seven grams, uh, seven calories per gram. So if you eat, if you're drinking alcohol, easy to over drink. Let's be honest, we've all been out and had twelve pints. Um, it's easy to over over consume, uh, and it's it's high. It's relatively high in calories. So that, that's one thing I would say. Um, I don't tend to say, oh, cut carbs out, cut fat out cut protein out um but as much as you can limit alcohol it's a really good thing to do because it's empty calories it doesn't fill you as much as as food um and it, it's relatively high seven compared to the four four and even fat is nine so it's only just less than fat um people don't tend to look at that if you can cut out those liquid calories early on that's really good uh second question from rich thanks rich h um what do you replace potatoes and rice with? Really easy question. Really easy question for me. First thing, I've got my notes here. I'm not making this up as I go. There, 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 there. Um, I've got my notes. So first thing, the, to replace potatoes and rice with, this is a secret that no one else knows. First thing, less potatoes and rice. Just drop your portion size down. Potatoes and rice aren't bad. It's easy to overeat them. I've just said that. Second thing, if you're eating um, a plate of you know, bangers and mash, take bangers and mash. Sausages, you've bought you know, chicken sausages, they're low calorie um, or specifically low calorie sausages. Brilliant, good choice. Mash, you haven't put your butter and your cream in. Brilliant, but you've filled up well over half your plate with mash and you've got three sausages on top with a bit of gravy. Um, if you can take out, a third, a half of that mash and replace it with green leafy veg, that will help, okay? So like I said, eat less potatoes and rice. If you can cut out, if you can add in veg in place of, not in addition to, in place of, um, that will help. Um, it'll also give you more micronutrients. Um, so uh, beyond those macros, beyond the three, the, the other stuff you need. And it's really good for volume eating. Google volume eating is a valuable thing. Um, it just means eating more, more stuff for less calories. Um, so I'm going to talk about brown rice and sweet potato now. So brown rice and sweet potato are seen as, oh, they're the best thing in the world. They are good. Okay, because they add fiber, they add whole grain, they, they're good for your body. Um, but in terms of calories, they're similar. Okay, so don't get um, lumped into the fact that, um, okay, I'm not eating that amount of mashed potato and I'm eating this much better thing, sweet potato, the same amount. For the same amount, it would be the similar calories. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm ditching my uh, white rice and I'm adding in the same amount of brown rice. It's, it's a, it's a fallacy. Okay. Don't, don't kid yourself. It's really important that you don't kid yourself. Yes. You'll be adding in whole grain. You'll be adding in fiber, but actually your calories will be staying the same. So you, you, even though your gut health might be improving, your fatness won't be going down. Um, so really important not to get drawn into that. If you like white rice, as opposed to brown rice, eat white rice, but eat less. Eat less of whichever you eat, okay? That's the first thing, eat less. Second thing, replace a bit of it with veg, leafy veg, green veg. Um, and the third thing is, um, it's, it's all about variety. 
Um, so my wife does a brilliant bulgur wheat recipe that takes no effort at all. Um, potato salad's really good, especially for making it with low-fat creme fraiche, uh, low-calorie creme fraiche. Um, scall- um, sp- scallions, I'm not American. Uh, spring onions. Um, you can add variety to your diet. Pasta, quinoa, couscous, all of those things. So it's not about just um, what can I replace them with for calories. It's replacing them with for variety as well. So just try and make sure your your diet's varied as well. Just to keep you excited. Okay, thanks very much for those two questions, Richard. Um, two questions left. Paul, Paul N. Um, I enjoy weight training. Will this hinder weight loss? First of all, I am not a PT. I'm not trained in that. I think... Uh, the new Bristol coach, Joe, is is a bit more aware of these things, so he'll be much better than, than me at this. Um, so I enjoy weight training. Will this hinder weight loss? So if you are weight training, you will gain about 0.225 to 0.5 pounds if you're really doing it well per week. So that's 0.125 kilos, 0.25 kilograms. Um, a little bit less than that, actually. If you are coming on the scale and you've put on two kilos, and you say, I have been really weight training this week, though. You are kidding yourself. People who weight train are aiming to put on half a pound, a pound, if you're really going at it per week. So if you've put on four pounds, spoiler alert, it's not muscle, okay? So don't kid yourself. That's not that's not saying you shouldn't go to the gym because going to the gym is really beneficial. I'm going to talk to you why. But don't say, uh, I think he's, uh, muscle weighs more than fat and I'm putting on loads of muscle. You're not. Arnie would love to. Arnie would love to train for the 30, 40, 50 minutes that you go in the gym and bulk up by two kilograms. He would love to do it because he wouldn't have to work so hard. Um, it's not. Um, it's It's not that. Okay. So yes, weight training is really good. It won't hinder weight loss. Okay. So you can lose weight while you're weight training. In fact, it's beneficial sometimes. Uh, Muscle gain requires a protein rich diet eaten in calorie surplus normally. So you need to eat more, um, eat more protein. Um, But obviously you're not going to overeat that. So you're not going to go over your calories either. So it just means changing so rather than it being 50 percent carbs 25 25 it might be 40 percent carbs 35 and 25 fat so 35 proteins you're upping the protein but you're keeping the same 100 percent of calories that you wanted to hit um so i've just done a bit of research based on this so building muscle i'm going to read this because it's not my area specialty. I'm not going to speak uh, as openly as I would on the, the nutrition side of it. So building muscle strength training is beneficial because one pound of fat within your body will burn it's at rest two calories a day. So just lugging that fat around, climbing upstairs, walking from here to there, um, standing, resting, rising, all of those things, one pound of fat was on your body will burn two calories a day. But if you've built one pound of muscle, don't forget that will take weeks and weeks and weeks of normal training. If you've built one pound of muscle, that will burn three times as much, six calories a day. This is why people who are very lean can eat lots and you go, oh, it's their genes, it's their metabolism. Yes, it is. But it's also the fact that they've got their body to a place where their body is full of muscle, which is working hard for them. My body is more fat than muscle. So therefore, that fat is not working for me. It's only burning for resting and rising, moving about, doing exercise, only burning two calories. If my muscle, if my body was very, very lean, potentially I might be able to eat even more because that muscle is doing more work. It's burning more calories. Um so having adding muscle can be beneficial. <clears throat> Don't forget, it's not going to happen quickly. Don't come. You haven't put on two calor- uh, two kilos of muscle in a, a week. Um, <clears throat> lifting weight, just just generally lifting weight or, or cardio in the gym, um, that does burn calories as well. So actually being at the gym burns calories. Spoiler alert, though, your Apple Watch is lying to you. Your MyFitnessPal, when you put it in, it's lying to you. Um, when we 
run for 28 minutes on a football pitch, we haven't burned 400 calories. We've probably burned far less than that. So don't listen to your fitness tracker. Your fitness tracker is really good for telling you how, how long you've gone, how fast you've gone, things like that, if, how many calories it lies to you, okay? Ignore the fitness tracker for that, calories. Um, so lifting weight burns calories, cardio burns calories, so that's going to be good. Um, it will add to your deficit, but don't eat those calories back because your tracker lies to you. Um, there's a big debate between cardio versus strength. Both are calorie burning. Um, cardio actually does burn a little bit more than strength training, but I've said um, that if you're strength training and trying to build muscle by adding, by upping your protein slightly and, and, and doing extra strength work, then that can burn more calories in the long run. And also strength training because of your, your body replacing um, that damaged muscle and things like that, it burns calories for a bit longer than cardio. So once you come off cardio, um, cardio generally, you know, the calories stop burning at a quicker rate than if you strength trained. So thanks ever so much for that question, Paul. Hopefully you've answered that well. If I haven't, do your own research because this is my level of expertise. Replacing potatoes and rice, I'm all over it. Uh, talking about carbs versus fat versus protein, I'm all over that. That's my specialism. Uh, that's more my expertise, sorry, not my specialism. Um, the, the fitness side of it isn't. So speak to someone who really does know that as well. Um, I can give you a basic. Uh, really good question from Nick now. Last one, um, how to get your family involved in your journey. So I've had this as well. My wife wasn't initially and then was, which was fantastic. Um, he says he doesn't want to eat separately. Brilliant. However, I will say if your family really aren't on your journey right at the start, you might have to. So I did eat separately to my family. I definitely don't eat at the same time as my kids because my kids eat at five or six. And if I eat at five or six, what I do is I become a Snackosaurus Rex. Um, because I've eaten too early. So I eat not generally at 7, 7.30, maybe 8, um, and then I go to bed because it makes me not get hungry again afterwards. Like, you know, once you're in bed, you know, I love my bed. I don't get up. Um, so I eat later than my children, but I eat the same time as my wife, and that's changed. It didn't used to be. My wife used to eat with my children, um, and then I used to eat later. Um, so you don't want to eat separately, but it might be a necessity um, unless they're there. Um, ways of getting your family on your journey with you is talk openly. Um, so just say, listen, I'm trying to lose weight. I'm, I'm trying to do this. So I'm going to be eating this. Um, ask for accountability. My daughter at the moment, I, I'm going through a bit of um, a time where I'm trying to cut down as well. Um, I've, I've said to my daughter, say to me, don't eat that off my plate. So when she's finished and she's got one waffle left, one mini waffle and she says, I don't want to eat that. And and we try and get her into this habit where we say, you know, we don't say clear your plate um, because I think lots of us are in this situation because we've been told, oh, you must finish your food. You must do this. You must do that. Um, so I don't do that. But then I also say to my daughter, say to me, please say to me, dad, don't eat that. Or once you're finished with your food, say, dad, I'm finished. Can I get rid of my food? Yes, go and put it in the food recycling. Um, so my, my daughter is also my accountability. So she says, please. Snackosaurus Rex, stop eating that. Um, so accountability, ask for your wife, uh, ask for your partner, ask for your, whoever it is, your children. They can give you that accountability as well. Um, within the house, don't victimize foods. We're not having any sweets in this house. No sweets because I'm on a diet. Guess what your kids are going to say? Where are my bloody sweets? <laughs> so don't victimize foods. Sweets, sweets are fine. Kids, especially if they're running around all day burning that energy within reason, sweets are fine for those children. So don't victimize food. Don't victimize food groups. I've just talked about fats, proteins, carbs. They're all really valuable. Um, so if you don't want them to see your diet as being a really negative thing, don't take away the thing they really love. So don't victimize foods. Um, plan meals together. Cook meals together if you can. You know, uh, wrap pizzas a, a brilliant thing that i've done with my kids um we're all having wrap pizzas tonight we're all going to make them um i've said i don't eat mine at the same time so mine go on the side my kids make them they sprinkle everything on the top um i talk about oh, that's a bit too much cheese for me because let me tell you something about cheese cheese is full of fat you know and i don't say guys that cheese is lots of fat in there and that's nine calories per gram i don't say that but i say daddy wants a little bit less cheese than that um 
because he's trying to cut down on that. Um, like I said about Richard's question about what can I eat instead of potatoes? Less potatoes. What can I eat instead of cheese? A bit less cheese. Still get the cheesy flavor, but it's a bit less. So plan your meals together, cook your meals together. That's valuable. And ask for support. When things are tough, just say, listen, I'm finding it tough at the moment. I'm going to do you know, quite often... If I'm having a tough week and, you know, I've overeaten the day before, I might say to my wife, listen, um, we do this quite often. Um, do you mind if I have cereal for tea? I'm just going to have a bowl of cereal for tea um, because that 1,000-calorie meal that I was going to have, that 800-calorie meal, I'll drop down to about 300, and that'll help me for the week, you know, with my average. Uh, and she'll say, yes. She might say, well, I'm still going to eat if that's all right. And I'd say, yeah, but I'm going to do this. So I've asked for that support and I've asked, I've just been open about it. Um, so really good question. I think that's something that lots of guys could listen to. So how to get your family involved in your journey. Um, hopefully that's been valuable for you. Um, hopefully this valuable for um, the rest of the Welsh leagues. Hopefully it's valuable for the new, uh, the Bristol guys. Definitely my Newport guys. I think a lot of those questions have come up in our consultations uh, prior to you playing in the past so even though it's nick it's richard it's paul it's luke even though it's you four that have asked those questions um and by the way thank you ever so much for that even though it's you guys who have asked the questions it's actually everyone's going to benefit um because those questions are very universal if you answer those questions i think most people who are trying to lose weight they're the questions people are asking okay so thank you so much thanks so much for listening and thanks for watching um anything else you need to know whether you're in bristol you've got my contact details newport guys you definitely know you can reach out uh, through your captains through your player facilitators direct to me or any other leagues within wales feel free to to drop me a message on facebook or speak to your league coach they all know me okay thanks so much bye uh -huh.